today. Oh my gosh. Yes. What is the mole? Oh, it's a huge day. I'm so pumped that we do this early now. Okay, we used to not do this till like around mole day or even after mole day, but now we do it before mole day. We're like a month away from mole day, which is really exciting. I'll more on that later. Okay. Uh, but before I get into this a little bit, um, I do want to ask because what is, what are the two main types of data you can collect uh, in science? What are our two main types? Uh, wait, Amelia, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah, so our two types of data. I just want to put this out there just to make sure we kind of review this a little bit. Two types of data. We got qualitative, right? And we also have quantitative. So what is qualitative data? Can you guys come up with an example of qualitative data? Garrity. Okay. Uh, so observations, or it's like a narrative, right? I mean, it's just you're describing something, right? Okay. All right. And what makes quantitative data different from that? Isn't quantitative data uh, observations? Morgan, right? Great, yeah. Numbers, right? Measurements, things like that, okay? So quantitative is all dealing with numbers. What, in terms of chemistry, what do you think of the two is probably one that we're going to really spend a lot more time on? The quantitative portion, right? Chemistry is quantitative, all right? It's very quantitative. Now, do we take observations, trying to describe reactions, things like that? Absolutely, right? But chemistry is really quantitative. We do a lot of math in chemistry, okay? So chemistry is very quantitative. Right? We want to measure things and stuff like that. So, and this is part of the reason why, like, people get freaked out with chemistry, okay? Because there's a lot of math involved and things like that. They get intimidated by that. Don't be like that, okay? All right? We can do this. It won't be that big a deal. All right? But this is also one of the reasons why, like, when it comes to majors in college, you look at biology majors. Now, oh, there's, let's say there's, like, 100 bio majors, okay? And you look at chemistry majors, you can probably chop that down to about 30. Okay, then you look at like physics majors and you can chop that down to maybe about like 10. Okay, and notice how the increase in difficulty of math <laughs> goes along with that. It's about the same. So like when you go to like for teacher, right, you're going to go get a bio job, all right, there's a, a whole ton of bio teachers out there, okay, dime a dozen. All right, when it comes to chemistry teachers, they're always looking for chemistry teachers, okay. There's an opening, not a lot of them out there, okay, you got a pretty good shot. Physics people are like recruiting you, okay, because there's not many physics teachers out there at all, okay, so it's it's a little rough like that, okay, um, I think it's along that line, but whatever, that's here, neither here nor there, I got to stay focused, mole, all right, mole, all right, so how many of you guys went to the beach this summer? Seriously, this many people went to the beach, like, did you all go to the beach? Did you guys go to the beach? No, no beach, not to the lake. There's a beach at the land, North Avenue Beach. Did you go to the beach at the lakefront? No? Did you go to a beach with, well, a lake with sand? Oh. Forget it then. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, the beach, you guys you guys have been to a beach in your life, right? Okay, all right, good. All right. So, I was hoping. <laughs> you've been around sand before, right? What if I asked you to, like, count the grains of sand on the beach? Okay, like, right, because you would just start, like, all right, you scoop up some sand with your, like, sand castle, like, shovel, put it down, and you start, like, counting one, two, three, right? You'd count the rest of your life, you no know, stopping to take a break to eat, bathroom, any of that stuff, count the rest of your life, and what would happen? Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't even probably be in the close, right? You would have to count, right? And think about how, like, you can see a grain of sand, right? Think about, like, a chemist. And we're dealing with atoms and compounds and molecules, right? Can you see those? 
so, they're so small, right? They're so small. You can't count those, okay? But we want to. We want to. So we got we to gotta do something about that, okay? So you got to think about this. It's so quantitative, but if we think, like, about grains of sand on a beach, right, and we try to quantify that, right, this is, this is like an analogy to, you know, atoms or compounds, right, et cetera, right, those things. We're talking about enormous numbers. If we were to gonna count all of these atoms and compounds and like little great sand on beach, how it, millions upon millions upon millions of this stuff, right? Okay, so we want to count that stuff and we want to make it, but we but it needs to be manageable for us, right? If we're counting like look in just five milliliters of water, okay, of H two O. Right, we know that's the that's the molecule for water, right? H two O, right? That contains two times ten to the twenty third molecules of H two O. Okay, look. All right, so this is about five point. Two zero milliliters. Okay, this amount of water. There it is. That's it. Two times ten to the twenty third molecules. Like twenty three zeros, right? That's an obscene number. Obscene. So large amount of molecules, and just that little bit. That's like a, not even like a sip of water, right? I mean, you think about that. Think about like. You take a glass of water and you take a drink of it, how many millions upon millions of molecules of water you just swallowed in and then your body's going to process and all that stuff, right? How many millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of atoms there that make you up, right? There are not even as many stars in the sky that there are atoms that make up you, right? Okay, so that's craziness to think about. Like, it's almost like infathomable, right? So if we're trying to count molecules and atoms and compounds, well, right, that's just not going to work, right? That's not going to work. we got to make it much more uh, reasonable for us, okay? So there's a, uh, so the deal is here, chemists need, uh, like, needed a way to quantify Uh, all of this stuff in a manageable way. I'm going to say stuff, right, in quotes, right, like atoms, compounds, molecules, all this stuff in a manageable way. So in comes Avogadro. Okay, he's this Italian chemist. He comes up with some experiments, devises some experiments, and figures out, right, that and comes up with the idea of the mole, okay? And that's the fact that, and he didn't determine this, but later on, more and more experiments go on, and we determine that, hey, one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles. And I'll tell you what that means in just a moment. Okay, so some obscene amount, right? And a representative particle could be an atom. Uh, it could be a molecule. It could be a something we call formula unit. Okay, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But ultimately, the idea here is that, hey, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, all right? Just kind of like how many how many uh, uh, donuts are in a dozen donuts? What? Twelve, right? Okay. Uh, how many feet? Uh, well, how many inches are in one foot? Twelve, right? We could count those, no problem, 
right? They're big enough to count, right? A dozen eggs, no problem, okay? When it comes to these particles and stuff, it's so small, you can't count them out realistically, but, hey, one mole is that amount. Okay, it's just like that. It's a chemist dozen. All right, that's what it is. It's a chemist dozen. All right, so you know, I want to kind of give you an idea of just how big a mole is. Okay, so we're going to take a break. We're going to watch a quick little movie here. There we go. All right, so we're back. So asking that question about like, okay, well, how do they determine how many are in there? Leads me to the periodic table. Right, and using the periodic table. Because all of the masses on the periodic table there, all those red numbers with the decimal places and stuff, those guys are the mass of one mole of every single one of those elements. Okay? So when we look at molar mass, is kind of our next thing that we want to talk about. All right, molar mass is kind of the next obvious thing to go to here. Okay? So because this is going to relate a mole to mass, which is something that's useful to us, right? When we talk about mass, we can talk, we can measure that, right? We can measure that in grams. We have balances back there that measure grams. We can do that. So that's perfect. So we want to be able to do that. So uh, pretty much molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. Mass of one mole of a substance. One, not an L or anything like that. One mole of a substance. When we talk about molar mass, we're talking about the mass of one mole of any substance. So the periodic table is set up this way, all right, already for us. Okay? So if I have one mole of iron, okay? I look on the periodic table up there, and I look for iron, Fe. It's number 26 up there. Okay. And you'll see under the Fe, it's 55.845 grams is one mole. One mole of iron would be 55.845 grams on the balance. Okay. If we looked at, like, if I had one mole of NaCl, how do I figure that out? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to add sodium and chlorine's molar masses together to find the mass of the compound. Okay. So sodium, right, is 22.9898. I think that's what it says. And we'll add in chlorine, which is 35. Point, is that 453? Okay, so it's total. Got our calculator here. 2.9898 plus 35.453. Okay, it's 58.4428 grams. All right. Okay, very good. So, what about one mole of water? Right? We know the formula for water is H2O. So in order to figure out what its molar mass is, what did, do you guys remember from the video? 18.01. Okay. All we're going to do is we're adding up the molar masses from the periodic table to get that number. All right. So I'm going to do 2 times 1.00795 plus our oxygen, which is 15.9994. Well, guess what? 2 times 1.00795 plus 15.9994. Oh, 18.015 grams. Okay. So let's see where that's coming from. Okay. I'm going to do one more example here for you. And then we'll start to figure them out on our own here a little bit. So how about um, if we had one mole of um, magnesium hydroxide. 
So that's the formula for magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2. Okay. So whenever you have something in math that's inside parentheses and we got something that's outside it, what do we need to do? Yeah, we got to distribute. So we just need to distribute that to the to the stuff. So here we got one magnesium, right? How many oxygens do I have in this formula? Two and two hydrogens. Okay. So we got one magnesium at uh, where is it at? There, it's twenty four point three oh one point three. Five, right? Plus two times our fifteen point nine 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 four, plus two times one point zero zero seven nine five. Okay, so we just add them all up. So I got fifty eight point three one nine grams. Nine seven grams. So that's molar mass. So molar mass, if I ask you to solve for the molar mass of a compound, it's always, the units are always grams per mole, right? Like I'm setting these up a little bit. So you see like, I have a conversion here that we're going to be able to use, right? If I know the grams of sodium chloride, then I know how many moles I have to, okay? So I can just like 12 inches in one foot, all right? We're setting up our own little conversion factors that we're going to use to convert between grams and moles and things like that. But it's specific for each substance that we look at. Okay? So what we need to do before we kind of move on from here and actually like put the mole to use, we want to practice uh, calculating molar masses for substances. Okay? So I got a little worksheet that we'll do for practice. All right? And that's what we're going to do.